Hello, welcome to Jodie's Story and Craft. Do you know what the background colour of the cover of this book is? Did I hear red? No, it's blue, isn't it? Too easy. But if you look closely at the front cover, you can see that there's actually different shades of blue. And that gives us a hint as to what's in the story. Front covers can tell us a lot about predicting what's in the story inside. Now, these shades are interesting of blue because there's lots of great names for shades of colour. And the reason why I'm talking about it is because this is part of the Rainbow Mystery Series um, books, which all focus on a different colour and the shades of those colours. So in regards to blue, let me show you on my colour chart. Can you see that? We have all our common blue um, blobs up here of um, really kind of good, strong blue colours, which can be named uh, shades such as sapphire, or even like if it's a good bold blue, it can be called ultramarine. And if we add a bit of white to that blue, we're going to get a nice light blue colour. And some shades of light blue are cornflower or powder blue. Then if we add some yellow to a nice bold blue colour, we can get, what colour do you think? What shade do you think it would turn into? More of a greeny blue. And a shade which is greeny blue is called turquoise. Then if we add some red to blue, we're going to get a purpley shade of blue, like periwinkle or indigo. Then if we even add yellow, white and red, we're going to get kind of like a grey colour, like steel blue. Now these are just some of the shades of blue that we have in our world. And when I read this story, you'll be able to hear some of those shades. And when you do, I'd love you to put your hands on your head. Even if you hear the word blue, put your hands on your head. Now, as I mentioned, front covers can predict what's gonna go on inside the story. Can you read what it says, what these words are? The blue thief. So we already talked about the blue bit, but what's a thief? A thief is someone who takes something without asking. Hmm, the blue thief. I wonder who is the blue thief in this story? Let's find out. Meet Midnight Blue. He is a six-year-old boy who likes the usual stuff that six-year-old boys enjoy, particularly if they are coloured blue. That's right, blue. Did you put your hands on your head? In fact, all of Midnight's family are crazy about blue. They love their blue roofed house. They love wearing blue clothes. They also love their blue toilet, tables and chairs. But most of all, they love who they are because everyone in the family have names that are shades of blue. Apart from Midnight Blue, who's here, there is his sister, Indigo Blue. Midnight's mum is called Sky Blue. Midnight's dad is called Steel Blue and even their pet guinea pigs called Periwinkle and Sapphire have two of the most glorious shades of blue as their names. Now, if you ever met the Blue family, you would find them to be the most agreeable, happy people in the land. Lately, however, something has happened to make them sad and puzzled. Can you make a sad face? What about a puzzled face? They are even feeling blue. 
You see, they have a problem. Things have started going missing. Blue things. Disappearing. Why? It all started one cloudy Friday when Mrs Blue was blowing up balloons to celebrate Sapphire's third birthday. Happy birthday, sang Mrs Blue to Sapphire. Will we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sapphire. Happy birthday to you. Suddenly, a whirring and a clicking noise came from over the fence. Mrs Blue frowned. Can you frown? Babbling blue budgie, she said. What strange sounds. Mrs Blue went inside the house to find some tape to attach to the balloons so that they could um, go on the guinea pig's cage. When she returned to finish blowing up the balloons, she could only find two balloons, not three. Where was the other one? How peculiar. The next day, Midnight was riding his blue bike, the ultramarine two-wheeled machine. Mr Blue waved at Midnight, can you give him a wave, holding out a blueberry smoothie for him. Thanks, Dad, said Midnight. I'm thirsty. Midnight stood on the veranda to slurp his drink through a blue-coloured straw. There was that noise. Midnight heard whirring and clicking noises. Blistering blue boots, said Midnight. I haven't heard that noise before. Midnight put his drink down to look where the noises were coming from. When Midnight returned to his drink, his straw was nowhere to be seen. Where had it gone? How peculiar. Sunday was Indigo Blue's soccer day. Her powder blue and white coloured soccer socks were still on the clothesline from yesterday. As she went outside to get them, she heard those same weird clicking and whirring sounds from over the fence. Bouncing blue balls, said Indigo. What is making that noise? Just then, Mrs Blue shouted from the house, Time to go, Indigo. But Indigo could only find one sock on the clothesline. Where was the other one? How peculiar. Next to Lou, something was Mr Blue. It happened on Monday, washing day. Mr Blue was pegging some clothes on the line. Sure enough, he heard those noises that Mrs Blue, Midnight and Indigo had heard. Bobbing blue boats, said Mr Blue. What strange sounds. When Mrs Blue... Sorry, when Mr Blue pulled the last of the clothes from the washing basket to hang them up, he realised all of the blue pegs were gone. Where had they gone? How peculiar. On Tuesday, Midnight's next door neighbour Nellie came over to play. Midnight told her all about the Blue family's problem. On Friday... Mrs. Blue had lost one blue balloon. On Saturday, Midnight had lost a blue coloured straw. On Sunday, Indigo had lost one powder blue and white coloured soccer sock. And finally, on Monday, Mr. Blue had lost some blue pegs. Bubbling blue bananas, said Midnight. Where can they be? I know who your blue thief is, revealed Nellie. Come with me. Midnight followed Nellie through the adjoining gate into her backyard. Nellie pointed to the bushes at the very back of her yard. Midnight looked, Midnight listened, and then he saw it. A medium-sized bird with bluey-black plumage was prancing and hopping around an arch made of sticks. This bird was making the same buzzing and whirring and clicking sounds he and his family had heard. There's your blue thief, Nellie whispered to Midnight. 
He's called a bowerbird because he loves collecting blue things to decorate his bower. She pointed to the arch of sticks. Sure enough, there was the blue balloon, the blue straw, the powder blue and white coloured soccer sock and the blue pegs. Can you see them there? Thanks, Nellie, said Midnight. They watched as the bowerbird whirred and clicked and buzzed and flew over Midnight's head, plucking the blue feather out of his cap for his bower. Brazen blue burglars, exclaimed Midnight. So who was the blue thief? Here's the satin bowerbird with that blue feather in his beak. Now, satin bowerbirds are very interesting birds. They are found down the south and eastern sides of Australia on this coast area here. And they build these bowers once the boy, the male bowerbird, turns seven. So before he's seven, the bowerbird will actually look like this. Let me show you a picture of what he looks like. There. That's actually what the girl bowerbird looks like all the time for her whole life. But while the, the boy bowerbird looks like that until he's seven, he, he molts all his feathers at seven. So he loses all those feathers and then he turns into looking like this. Let me show you another picture. Here's a satin bowerbird tending to his bower. So he then grows back all these beautiful bluey, black, shiny feathers and looks rather magnificent. And then collects all these blue items um, like bottle tops and straws and things that we um, heard about in the story to decorate his bower. Do you know why he decorates a bower like that? It's actually not a nest. It's actually so he can get a girlfriend. So he can attract a girlfriend to his area. So he tries to decorate it all really beautifully. And even if the wind or someone moves any of those items, he will move them back into the spot he wanted them to be in. So it's really important for him, the placement of all of these items around um, the, um, the actual bower. Do you know what? satin bowerbirds eat. They actually eat fruit, sometimes insects or seeds. Uh, and what else can I tell you about them? Now I've got this app on my phone and uh, I just wanted to play you what the satin bowerbirds sound was. Have a listen to that whirring clicking sound that um, you heard in the story. Can you imitate that sound? Another uh, thing that the satin bowerbirds do is that they actually imitate sounds that they hear around them, like fire engines or uh, kind of the chatter of people. And I wanted to show you some other bowerbirds, which are um, a little bit different to the satin bowerbird. Um, there's the region bowerbird, which is also found in New South Wales. And it looks like um, this when it's, uh, uh, until it's four, the boy looks like this. The girls look like this all the time. The boys, once they get to four, they molt their feathers and they grow back feathers which look like this. How's that? How beautiful. And so then they decorate their bowers with yellow and black items um, and uh, red items as well. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting that they tend to find things which are related to the colour of their feathers. There's other types of bowerbirds. Uh, here we go. There's one with a, a funny little pink mohawk. That one's called the, the Great Bowerbird. 
and it makes a really big bower, about one meter high. And then there's, uh, here we go, here's the uh, Eclipse white things um, for its bower. And then there's another one which has just like a little bit of a purpley pink thing on its back of its neck. Uh, and uh, it looks like this. Uh, the boys and the girls look like that. That's a spotted bowerbird. Now you might know lots of different types of birds apart from the bowerbirds. Can you tell me some birds that you know? What birds do you see in your yard? Do you see any of these? Do you see any kookaburras? Or some sulfur crested cockatoos? What noises do these make? Let me play you the sound of the kookaburra and we'll see if we can make that sound too. Let's have a look, see if I can find it on my app here. Here's the sound of the kookaburra, have a listen. Can you make that noise too? Off you go, have a go. What about some king parrots? Do you get those in your yard? Or some cururongs, or birds, or willy wagtails, the ones that hover from side to side, can't sit still, those willy wagtails. I know some songs about birds. I reckon you probably know them as well. What was this bird? Can you remember which this one was? Kookaburra. Do you know this song? Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Kookaburra, how gay your life must be. Would you like to sing along this time? Kookaburra sits in the old gum tree. Merry, merry king of the bush is he. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh. Kookaburra, how gay your life must be. What about this one here? What do you think this bird is? Here he is. Well, it's actually a girl magpie. Let's have a sing about magpies warbling. Magpie warbles in the morning sun, looking for worms to fill her town. Warble, magpie warble, magpie how gay your life must be. Want to join in with me this time? Magpie warbles in the morning sun, looking for worms to fill her town. Warble, magpie warble, Magpie, how gay your life must be. Now I have another type of bird in my bag here. And this is one we haven't talked about yet. What's this one? A duck. I'm sure you know a song about a duck. Join in with me with this song. Five little ducks went out one day Over the hills and far away Mother duck said, quack, 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 and only four little ducks came back. Four little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 and only three little ducks came back. Three little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 and only two little ducks came back. Two little ducks went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother duck said, quack, 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 and only one little duck came back. One little duck went out one day 
over the hills and far away. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack and none of those five little ducks came back. So Mother Duck went out one day over the hills and far away. Mother Duck said quack, 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 quack and she bought all her five little ducks back. Alrighty. Alrighty, well, how about you get set for some craft and check out the next video, which is all about craft to do with the blue thief. So I'll see you then. Bye.